Hey everyone, welcome back to another dividend investing video. Summer is here, school is out, the sun is out, vacation time is upon us, but no matter what, the dollar cost average dividend investing journey I'm on continues. At the moment, I'm focused on a handful of stocks. Today, I'm going to highlight three in particular, I think make great core positions in a dividend growth portfolio. And all three of these companies have stocks that are priced, I believe, attractively for a long-term buy and hold. These are stocks I am buying right now, and I'm going to show you the newest stock in my dividend growth income portfolio. Let's just get into it. I'm Nick, and this is the Dividend Growth Income Channel. Thank you for joining me today. I'm not a financial advisor or guru. I'm just a regular guy who wants to share my love of dividend growth investing and building financial independence with passive income. If you could, please do me a favor, smash the like button and subscribe to keep up with future videos. This helps us out more than you can imagine with the algorithm so we can bring you more quality dividend investing content. So the first stock I'm buying this summer, and I was buying it in the spring, it's Starbucks Corporation, ticker SBUX. I think everyone is familiar with Starbucks by now as they're the world's largest coffee retailer. Starbucks is a company with some issues at the moment, and it's going through somewhat of a transitional period. Now, back in May, first quarter earnings released quite underwhelming, highlighting their weakest performing quarter in the U.S., outside of the pandemic and financial crisis. And shares dropped, they dropped hard. So hard that Starbucks ended up becoming the newest position in my dividend growth income portfolio. It got to a place where I just couldn't ignore it and decided it was worth taking out a small stake in the company given its stellar history and my belief in the turnaround potential and just my love of the brand itself of Starbucks. Now, it's notable that Simply Safe Dividends just gave Starbucks a downgrade back in May after their Q1 earnings, dropping their score for 67 to 60. It's not suggesting the dividend is in immediate danger, but there remain a few open questions, concerns around Starbucks. Like, has it become too pricey in today's economy? And could it be losing out to competitors like mom and pop coffee shops or the fast growing Dutch Brothers coffee? Now, at the moment, I think the dividend is riskier than most of the companies in this portfolio, but a risk worth taking, I believe, is I'm betting on Starbucks' eventual turnaround story here. But I do expect some volatility with this one and hopefully some more opportunities to continue building up a good position at a decent cost basis. So today I own nearly 12 shares of Starbucks in the dividend growth income portfolio. And this is valued at $957.68. That's a cost basis of $75.53. Today, I'm up about 6% on this position, and it's also projected to pay $27.33 in dividends approximately over the next 12 months. I acquired the majority of this back in May. I'm probably not looking to increase this position over $80 at this time, but below $80, I'll nibble at it. I'll add $50 here or there. And if it goes below my cost, I'm, that's when I'm going to get more aggressive. Now, their dividend history so far has been exceptional for the last 13 years, Starbucks has been paying a dividend and growing it each of those years, and that's by an average of 10% per year over the last five years. Last September, they announced their 13th consecutive dividend raise at a respectable 7.5%. We'll see one more payment in August at this current $0.57 cent per share amount, then we'll expect their 14th dividend increase announced uh, for their November dividend. Management does say they remain committed to this quote-unquote best-in-class dividend. So I'll take them at their word for that. The next ex-dividend date is August 12th, paying out on August 26th. Starbucks does pay in the months of February, May, August, and November. That was a nice bonus adding it into this account is that that's my weakest block of months. I'm so heavy in March, June, September, and December. So I'm building this up to be a core position. Uh, the payout ratios are fine for Starbucks right now. 61% of forward earnings, 71% of forward free cash flow. It's a little bit elevated, but not excessively so, but something to keep an eye on. Share buybacks have also been a thing over the last decade. We saw outstanding shares go from $1.54 billion outstanding in 2014, while today they're $1.14 billion. Granted, the majority of these buybacks took place between the years of 2017 and 2020. Since then, it's pretty much slowed down. But more importantly, they've not been diluting us by issuing more shares. Now, from a timeliness perspective, you can lock in a starting yield of 285 of your shares if you buy today, that's 37% above the five-year average yield of 2.07%. That's consistent dividend growth combined with the recent weakness in stock price has created what I see as a unique opportunity for an iconic brand. Like I said, I just couldn't pass it up. And shares, while they're trading fairly rich at a PE of 21.2, compared to the five-year average of 29.0, 
It's quite a discount. It's about as cheap as we have seen Starbucks shares in the last five years. But there is good reason behind that. They also made a calculation using the Gordon growth model, which is used to determine the intrinsic value of a stock based off of future dividends. It's definitely not perfect and it allows for a wide range of values, but look, I went with a 6.5% projected future growth and using a 9% discount rate, this gave me an estimated value of $97.13. I looked at what Wall Street analysts have to say and they put an average price target of $90.15 on Starbucks. So they see about 13% potential upside from where Starbucks shares are trading today. But year to date, shares of Starbucks are down 16%. Like I said, it's been a rough year for our favorite coffee retailer. Are you a buyer at these levels like I am? Let me know what you think down in the comments. And if Starbucks is not a buyer for you right now, let me know about a cool dividend stock you think is that I ought to be talking about here instead. The second stock I'm buying up this summer, it's Realty Income, ticker O. Yeah, the good old monthly dividend company. It's a triple net lease REIT. They pay out shareholders each month from the cash flow of their over 15 thousand real estate properties. So this is a way to invest in real estate without getting into the hassle of being a landlord. And no doubt O is a leader in the space with over 37 billion in value and expanding its presence beyond the US into Western Europe, places like Germany, Portugal, Italy, Spain. And like Starbucks before, this is another dog in the market right now. Wall Street has had no love for the stock. And really, this goes for the majority of REITs in today's high interest environment. Because these kind of investments are less attractive to investors. They can get similar returns without the risk. Shares reflect this as they're down 25% over the last five years. Rates are not going to be this high forever, however. And I'm counting on the share price to increase when that time comes. In the meantime, I'm chilling with 6% monthly dividend. And I'm happy with that. Simply Safe Dividends gives Realty Income a dividend safety score of 80, suggesting a dividend cut is unlikely. This is one of, if not the most popular REIT with dividend investors out there, despite the relatively poor performance lately. Now, I don't hold O in my taxable public portfolio that I share here on the channel, but I do have a position in my Roth IRA that I hold with Charles Schwab. I've been building a position for the last couple years. Right now, I have 34 shares of O. It's valued at $1,807.10. I'm actually down about 10% on this position, although the dividends have, I've collected probably even cuts me close to about even money now. Now, the monthly dividend income into the Roth generates is a nice bonus right now. This position is adding an extra 9 bucks into the Roth each month, and that just goes into my monthly purchases. I don't actually drip in this account because I'm getting more dividends in there, and I could be a little more selective with it. Now, I plan to add a few more shares over the summer. I'm targeting about 50 shares of O in this account uh, in the short term here, next year or so. And I think we'll get there by the end of the year. And again, this is in the Roth IRA. Now, the dividend growth streak here, it's impressive for realty income. Dividend aristocrat with 29 years of consecutive dividend raises. And they normally actually put out a couple small increases every year. Growth is on the smaller side on the lower end, but it's where you'd expect with a 6% yielder and a REIT. It's extremely consistent, growing the dividend around 3% on average every year. Does it beat inflation? Sometimes. Now, the next ex-dividend date is on July 1st, so that's coming up pretty quick. Paying on June 15th. Oh, always pays in the middle of the month. Remember, the dividend is non-qualified. It's a good reason to have it in a retirement account like I do or in some other type of tax-advantaged account because the dividends you collect would otherwise be taxed as ordinary income. And I love to see these slight increases every couple months. This is a company dedicated to paying dividends, and I am here for it. Total annual payout at the time of publishing is $3.16 per share. Adjusted funds from operations are at $4.22, easily covering that $3.16 dividend. And take note of this graph showing the growth in adjusted funds from operations per share. Earnings per share, cash flow per share is not as useful for REITs. We look at adjusted funds from operations. And you'll hear me shorten this to AFFO. Okay? Right now, that is a 75% AFFO payout ratio. That's fine for REITs. Turning our attention to timeliness, shares are currently yielding a juicy 5.94%. Historically, this is a great starting yield for a company like Realty Income. Currently, the dividend yield is 30% above the five-year average, suggesting an undervalued stock, or at least the potential of this. Also, looking at the P to AFFO, we can look at the PE again. It's a REIT, AFFO. Right now, this is as cheap as O has been in five years. At 12.6, compare that to the five-year average P to AFFO of 17.5. Now, since this is a higher-yielding, slower-growth stock, I wanted to see how many shares we need to buy if we want to have those dividends be able to drip us a single share each month. 
Now, obviously, this isn't possible to guarantee as the price changes, but going off today's 5313, this would require you to have more than 200 shares. In fact, 202 shares would pay you out $53.12 per month, which would just about cover it. This would take an investment of $10,736. I thought that was a pretty useful thing to know. Now, you invest in Owen Wonder, what exactly am I a landlord of now? Well, you'll be pleasantly surprised to see how diversified O's tenant base looks. You got 10% in grocery, 10% in convenience stores, 6.5% dollar stores. You got hardware stores, pharmacies, restaurants, automotive repair, gyms, and the like. You have tenants like Dollar General, Walgreens, Dollar Tree, Wynn Resorts, FedEx, and they even have BJ's. And sure, we could pick at a few of these, like Walgreens. We know I'm no fan of that company, but they own the property. So let's say Walgreens defaults, they move out, they can repurpose this property for another use. They own the property. Wall Street analysts set a price target of $60.03. This represents nearly 13% upside from where Realty Income shares are trading at the time of publishing. So, so far year to date, shares are down 7.5%. So in my opinion, the time is ripe to continue building up my position in this one because I believe in the likelihood of a turnaround in a company like this is just inevitable. I'm just following their growing adjusted funds from operations and seeing them continue to grow their business and expand. To me, buying up shares of Realty Income is just a no-brainer. Right, the third stock I'll be buying up this summer, Kroger, ticker KR. It's an American grocery supermarket, multi-department store that operates over 2,700 grocery retail stores under various banners throughout the United States. It's the largest supermarket operator in the U.S. by revenue and the country's fifth largest retailer overall. And just the other day, Kroger had their Q1 earnings conference call where they posted slight beats on both their EPS and on their revenue. This is a company that brings in $150 billion in revenue. SimplySafeDividends.com assigns a dividend safety score of 71. Considering the dividend safe, unlikely to see a dividend cut, last reaffirmed as of March 2024. I think one of the biggest questions around Kroger, as with most retailers, it's their margins. Retail is notorious for running on very thin margins. So even with these low payout ratios they have, things can change pretty quick. And Kroger is definitely on the low side with 3% operating margin and 2% free cash flow margin. I believe this is why Kroger is not ranked up in the 80s on Simply Safe Dividends. That's just my own observation. This has been a holding I've had in my dividend growth income portfolio from the beginning. My current position is 18.827 shares owned. This is valued at $945.30, and I'm currently up 8.75% on this position with an average cost of $46.17. The position has also paid me $21.84 in dividends, which are reinvested right back into Kroger stock. My yield on cost right now is 2.5%. I do want to increase my position in Kroger a bunch and continue growing this. So I'm looking to add to it incrementally below $50 price mark. And if it came back down to my cost or below, that's when I'm going to get a lot more aggressive. So I'll be watching for the right moments to keep adding to it this summer. I've already started adding to it a little bit recently here. Kroger has been paying and growing its dividend payment for 17 years. Dividend growth has been exceptional over that time frame. Even its last dividend raise last June announced was a 12% increase. And we're due for another dividend hike announcement, anticipating their 18th consecutive raise. But I'll hear about it any day now. They pay out in the months of March, June, September, and December. Right now, they've been paying 29 cents per share for a total annual payout of $1.16. When we get word on the next dividend hike, following the trend, I'm expecting the next one to be maybe 32, 33 cents, hopefully. We should find out pretty soon, as I said, because their next X dividend date is estimated to August 14th. The dividend is easily covered by earnings and forward free cash flow. 26% of forward earnings, 31% of forward free cash flow. Just keep in mind those margins. But with the free cash flow per share projected to be $3.72 per share over the next 12 months, I don't see any concerns. And the dividend looks quite healthy with plenty of room to continue what I think is Kroger's underrated dividend growth streak here. Now by dividend yield theory, Kroger is looking to be around reasonable value here with shares yielding 2.31%. That's only 6% above the five-year average of 2.17%. This could, of course, get a nice boost if uh, Kroger State continues to drop and, of course, that forthcoming dividend hike we are expecting. Kroger has a forward PE of 11.1, and this is a discount to the five-year average of 12.1. So from this metric, it could be a decent time to continue building up my stake in this company, and, and that's the plan. Another potential way to get a valuation for Kroger is by using a Gordon growth model like we did for Starbucks. 
And this is to see what the potential valuation for Kroger is based on future projected dividends. I'm going to go conservative with 7% average annual growth rate. Going forward, it's assuming double-digit dividend growth can't go on forever, right? And using a 9% discount rate, I'm going to give estimated fair share of $62.06 for Kroger. As to what Wall Street thinks, this is not a stock they're typically bullish on, but the analysts do have an average price target of $58.11 which is about 16% upside from where shares trade today. Kroger's had a solid year so far. Stock's up nearly 10% year to date. But in that last month, shares have actually dropped over 7%. Combined with his generally positive earnings reported earlier in the week, has me ready to continue increasing my position in Kroger. I would not even mind if this ended up being the number one position in the account. I love where they're positioned. Now, there are some questions uh, surrounding that Albertson's acquisition. Is that going to end up going through? That is looking less likely than it had in the past, but you know if there's definite word on that, we will certainly give you guys an update there. So those are the three stocks that I have positions, and I'll be continuing to increase my positions in these stocks this summer. I see these as core holdings for myself, with Realty Income being a position in the Roth IRA, and Kroger and Starbucks are core positions here in the dividend growth income portfolio, Starbucks being the newcomer. And if you'd like to see the top five positions in that portfolio, go ahead and click into this next video. Thank you so much for sticking around. Plenty more to come this summer. And until next time, keep investing.